Come on.
But then you reach out your hand to me I made it up alive Was discouraged down deep in my soul Trying to hide it too No one would know It's like death was closing in on me I was blind and could not see But then your love came and lifted me I made it out alone Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. That brought yeah, that, that got me a little emotional. I want to say happy Mother's Day to Tiffany, by the way. She's an amazing woman, and and and, yes. and Connie. Yes. But uh, hey, <laughs> guys, I don't know. I don't think I was going to make it out of that one alive. <laughs> that was Stella. Aww. That was 
I hate to use the word stellar because we don't want a stellar or a Grammy or another foolishness. No, we want the approval of God. We want the applause yes, of yes, God. Yes, it's yes, about yes, pleasing yes, the yes. Father. That's, That's what right. the talents that he gave us was to please him, yes. not to please anybody else but him. Right. But in the, yes. we get to partake in the, in the gift, in the talent. So yes. I am so, so, so blessed today. That was, <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. That means, that means so much to me. Yeah, well, thank you. I love you, Dane. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. So, yes, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Um, well, Angela wanted me to uh, speak today and share my testimony with you all. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. So, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with us. And um, um, I believe I can um, – I believe I'm, uh, I'm going to share something that uh, moms can relate to, and really all women. So uh, this is not just for the moms, but, um, but it does have to do with, with being, mo being a mom, um, but it has to do with something that um, all women struggle with. So, um, so this, uh, for me, this journey really, really started uh, when my son was born. 24 he's 24 years old so 24 years ago and um and just very quickly we had moved to a uh, new city we had moved to a new sh city it's actually the city was chicago uh we moved into a new home beautiful large home everything was seemingly going well in our lives uh, we had just uh won dove awards um and traveled worldwide. We were fulfilling our dreams, um, what we thought was our dream as singers, you know, something that we had worked for and trained for all of our lives. And um, so everything was seemingly going the way that it should, you know. And uh, we were happy, had been married um, since 92, 92, and uh, just had our first child, and this was in 97. So, um, so <laughs> I remember one day my husband went out with our, with our son. Uh, he was about five or six months old. And uh, when they left that day, I told you everything was going just great in our lives. When they left that day, I planned to take my life. That's what I planned to do when they left that day. I heard voices telling me, you are not a good wife, you are not a good mother, you are not a good children, and you'd be doing more harm than good by staying in the world. Those are exactly the words that, that I heard, this voice speaking, not audibly, but just to, to my thoughts, into my spirit, telling me to take my life. And um, I just, I felt, you know, I had always struggled with depression, okay? So this was uh, my deep, dark secret that I always struggled with depression. And suicidal thoughts were, uh, were kind of normal, kind of normal, because, I mean, it, that accompanies depression, okay? And um, so the oftentimes those feelings came to me, but not as strong as they did that day. I mean, it was like literally that my song uh, made it out, or our, our song made it out alive, um, which I wrote the lyrics to. I mean, literally death was closing in on me that day. I mean, I felt it all. Around. It's like I was surrounded. I was surrounded by darkness. Okay, now I know what that darkness was. I mean, this darkness we actually had a voice and was speaking to me. And um, all that time that they were gone, I meditated on how I would take my life and how I would finally commit suicide because this thing had followed me all my life. So no matter what I did, what uh, height of success I would reach, where I would go, what movie, uh, what, what city I would move to, it didn't matter. This thing haunted me, tormented me, and followed me 
everywhere. And it tore me down inside every single time. Every single time that I tried to feel good about myself, it would tear me down. So, so here I am, and um, I'm, I'm ready to, to throw in the towel. I mean, this is, this is my darkest day. I mean, it's like, it's depression is like a, a black hole that you're falling into. It's like blackest darkness that you're falling into, and you, I mean, there's just seemingly no way out. There's no light at the end of that tunnel. And I mean, you, you're trying to climb out, but you're falling. You're falling deeper in. You're falling deeper in. I, I mean, that's, that's the only way that I can describe it. It's, it's just, it's, it's hell. It's your own personal hell with no escape. There was seemingly no escape for me, and I, I was so desperate and, and felt so hopeless and worthless. Like, my life was worth nothing. My life was worth nothing. Um, so when you feel that way, <laughs> you want to end it all. You want to end it all. And I thank God. By the grace of God, Angelo came home with our son, and I just snapped out of it just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. So it was like, wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. I have a son. I have a husband. I have a, I have a recording career. I have, you know what I'm saying? I, <clears throat> I got I to stay alive. I got to stay alive here, but I didn't know how to do that because really when you struggle with depression, you, you don't, that's not living. That's not really living. It's just making it by. It's just surviving. Like, like I sang in, in song, I didn't want to just survive. Yeah, I want to thrive. I want wings to fly, you know? <sighs> um, so I knew that I had to do something different after that day. I knew, uh, like, like, it was like, okay, at least I understood that much. Like, I didn't know how to get out of this depression that I was in. I didn't know how to do it, but I knew that I needed to, and I needed to make whatever changes I had to in my life. So there's a, there's a certain blessing that comes from with hitting rock bottom and that desperation, you know, because it's like you're willing to, to do whatever, because I, I, was, I was ready to go into a mental hospital. I was ready to go on any medic, whatever medication to make this, to make this go. You know, that was not the answer, by the way, and I didn't go on medication, thankfully. Um, but after, after that day, it was like, okay, I, I know something, something's got to change. And, and I cried out to the Lord, really cried out to the Lord. And I remember God gave me an answer. God gave me a glimmer, a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of hope, because I was sitting in church one day, very still, very emotionally distraught from that whole experience, really. I was, I was, I was very shaken up. I mean, those voices were very real. I was shaken up, and I was sitting there, and the pastor said, the preacher said, all he said was, when you read the Bible, read it out loud. And that was all he said. That was all I heard that morning. And it was like I was sitting there, and I was like, oh, my gosh. When, it, when you read the Bible, read it out loud. Okay. And, and I just, and I took that. I took that one thing. Okay? Because that's all you have to do <laughs> sometimes is just do one little act of faith. And, and coincidentally, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, okay? okay? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now we know that, or now I know, that that hearing is also connected to Jesus' scripture, let he who has ears, let him hear. So you have to hear and understand and be like, oh, okay, it's like the light goes on. Oh, man, I know what I need to do type of thing. 
okay? So all I heard, when you read the Bible, read it out loud. Well, when we were traveling, when we, ha we had been traveling as singers, I remember one of the first churches that we sang at and did concerts at, um, someone on the staff gave me a promise book. Now, a promise book is like, uh, I don't even know if they sell those anymore, but uh, a promise book is when you, they group up scriptures by subject, you know, so you can quickly look at scriptures on hope or scriptures on, on uh, fear or what have you. So I remember um, taking this, this book really, really fast because I, I needed something really, I needed something really quickly. <laughs> To, to, and that was like, okay, if I can read the Bible out loud, wow, maybe that's, maybe that's my solution, you know, here. So I remember just starting with a few, guys, you can just start with a few scriptures. That's all you had to do. I had three scriptures that I would meditate on, that I would speak, you know, um, and those were 2 Timothy 1.7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And you know what? When I spoke that and when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, I have had a spirit of fear all my life since I was a little girl, maybe even since I was born through generational iniquity. This thing has been attached to me all my life. I suddenly realized <laughs> the enemy or one of the enemies that, were sp that was speaking to me that day, the spirit of, guys, this is an actual spirit. It's an actual evil spirit that works against God and against faith, the spirit of fear. And, and that spirit, those voices certainly did not come from God. It came from this evil spirit called fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of of a sound mind. Guys, I thought I was losing my mind. Fear will take your mind. I thought I was losing my mind because that's what fear does. It comes to torment you. It is a tormenting spirit. And there, the Bible says there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. It comes to torment us by, give, by, giving, by feeding lies into us. It is a tormenting spirit. So, wow. Just from read the Bible, read, read it out loud. <laughs> I was able, God gave me all this, started to unravel this mystery, okay? We have a lot of questions in life, and you know what? Only God's word has the answers. So God was giving me answers. And let me tell you, this thing started to lift, just slowly but surely started lifting off of my life. Um, also, the, another scripture was Psalm 139, 14. Um, I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Because I remember feeling badly about myself all my life, all my life, never, never. It was very few moments that I ever felt good about myself. But God is saying, no, I want you to feel good about you. I want you to feel good about you. David knew he was fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous, marvelous are his works, and we are his works we are his greatest work of art, guys. So we have a um, license to feel good about ourselves, okay? When we are reconciled to God, when we are reconciled to our Father, because all other self-esteem 
is fake. Like I used to try to fake confidence, but you can't. Confidence comes from a secure relationship with God when you know that you know that you know that you know your father loves you. That's where security comes from. And um, the other scripture was Jeremiah 29, 11. For God knows the plans that he has. I think this is uh, New, New American Standard Version. For God knows the plans that he has for you. Plans for welfare, not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. Not that you won't go through things in life. Part of our Christian life is going through suffering and hardship in order for us to learn obedience, okay? That is scriptural, okay? But, I mean, there is no total calamity that is going to overtake us because we have eternal life in the end, and we have life right now. We have life right now that we can enjoy. God gives us all things richly to enjoy. So, guys, I had to learn how to enjoy life. Something as simple as that. I had to learn how to enjoy life without going to the mall, without uh, expensive presents, you know. Like, not that, because those <laughs> things... <laughs> Angelo saying amen. <laughs> yeah, you got, yeah, you got, you got blessed. <laughs> um, guys, because that's, that's just, that's just a cheap thrill, okay? It, it makes you happy, but for a moment, okay? And then it's fleeting, and then it's over. We're talking about everlasting joy, enjoying the things of God. And, and you, you know what? That's all we're kind of left with, guys, because this world is going away. It's going away, all right? And God is going to eradicate it and make a new one, a new heavens and earth. And, and if we repent and we give our lives to him, we can be a part of that world. We can be a part of God's world his kingdom, where he alone is the king. Jesus is the king of his kingdom. And uh, so now sometimes I want out of this world, but in a very different way. <laughs> in a very different way, not because of depression and not uh, through suicide, okay? That is not, not the answer, okay, to be with God, all right? So... So uh, I wanted to share these things with you all. Um, it is so, so important, guys, to get out of fear. Because I found, because the Bible says anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. It's fear. The spirit of fear. Depression starts with the spirit of fear. Then the spirit of heaviness joins with it you know the the i mean i've always felt i was i was um wearing the world on my shoulders and god says no 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 yes he, jesus said my yoke is easy and my burden is light so if you have a heavy yoke upon you the spirit of heaviness if you have a heavy burden on you that is not from God. You have put that on yourself, and the enemy has come and joined with you, okay? God doesn't want us to live that way. I love how the King James says, be careful for, I mean, it's be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. I, ca I don't care about anything else, God, I care about you. Don't even care. Be careful for nothing. Our lives have been so burdened down by cares, and it chokes out the word, and it chokes out our fruitfulness. That's what cares do. And the Bible says, be careful. Don't even be careful. I mean, what a way to live. 
What a new life God gives us. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Fear not. Fear not when everything in this world, especially now, is telling us, be careful, be anxious, be fear-filled. Everything. Guys, we have to go after this. Because if we don't go after it, it is coming after us. It is, it is, let me tell you, it is here to destroy our lives and our relationship with God. So guys, go after this thing. Go after this. You have the tools that you need to destroy fear in your life. Guys, it is coming after you every time you turn on that television, every time you turn on your computer, every time you go to social media, it is coming after you. No matter where you go, what you do, it's coming after you. But God gave us the full armor of God. You know, that's the first thing, one of the first scriptures that the Lord gave me when I was saved, Ephesians 6, 12, for for um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Guys, one of those principalities is fear. I'm not sure which, but one of those is fear, and it's, it's huge. That is huge because it comes to destroy your faith in God. And the just shall live by faith. We cannot live this life without faith, so we cannot continue to walk in fear. God has stressed this to me, and this is, has been a theme with me and God since the very beginning. Do not fear. Do not fear. God has told me over and over and over again. The only thing that we fear is him fear of the Lord. That's the only healthy fear because fear brings all sorts of physical problems. How many diseases are stress related? Think about it. How many diseases are stress? Guys, fear has caused that. Fear, the root of a stress related disease is fear. And I'm learning this. I'm learning. Guys, I have not arrived by any means, but I've figured a few things out. And that's what I'm sharing with you all today. So I come against, we just want to pray, I come against the spirit of fear right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Guys, we have to go after this thing violently through the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and our shield of of faith, our faith in God through his word and his spirit, and we can conquer this thing. So I come against the spirit of fear right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command the spirit of heaviness to go from your people. Father God, we repent for fearing, for walking in fear, for being anxious for things, for being careful for things, for, uh, for fearing, for walking in fear, we repent. That's right. We command spirit of heaviness to go in the name of Jesus because we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. This is what gets us through the day and onto the next day. So I thank you for God for doing a new thing in your people. That fear, we know that fear must be destroyed in our lives. So we command the spirit of fear to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ, with which he is the name above all names. And he came to destroy all the works of the devil. All the works. And I just thank you for joy to be given back to your people. Peace to be given back to your people. Hallelujah. Right now, Hallelujah. I thank you, God. It is done. 
within our hearing right now. It is done through the works of Jesus Christ. Amen. Veronica, thank you for sharing today. Thank you for sharing your heart because it's hard to be transparent sometimes. It's hard to be real. And unfortunately, we don't experience a lot of real. You know, so, and, and this is, again, from the travels that we've done throughout the, the uh, ministry. We've, we just weren't part of churches that preach gospel. And so, you know, I, I was just reading the word as you were, as you were ministering, and uh, the word says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. The only peace is God's word, right? His gospel brings us peace. He is peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Are you going to believe the report today that Veronica brought? This is an important message that we all need to get, that we don't need to be intimidated by any government rules and regulations and how they're going to keep us under the masks and under the, 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 the shots in the arms and be under the fear of this world. Fear the one who can take your soul and your body and cast it to hell. That's the one you need to fear. But I say, have they not heard yes indeed? Okay, no. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. I'm telling you, Veronica, what you spoke today. Isn't God's it? words goes to the <laughs> ends of the earth. The Every devil the... in hell hears it. <laughs> Right, and, you know, and, he, and we trample on his head. Amen. That's right. So those, you yes. know, you know, we Woo! have we have those at Higher Place Church that are Amen. have been struggling with depression, Veronica, because you know, not out of their own self, but out of the attack of the enemy in our finances and in our, you know, what we're not worried about finances. You know, we, it's like. God will provide every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If you just trust him, that's all we do here. I, trust me. We trust the Lord. I've been, it's, it's, we've had to deal with this for a long time. Not just through the pandemic, but when we walked away from the gospel music industry and walked away from the prosperity churches that were, that were giving us money every week, okay, then all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, wait. What do we do, Lord? And I heard this gospel singer tell me, man, you're walking away from your job. Well, my, my friend, it's not a job. The, the Bible says the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable and without reproach. We don't do this for a job. We do this because we care about the gospel being preached throughout the world. Just like I just spoke there in Hebrews. And I'm going to tell you something. I want to thank my wife again for sharing her heart, because I'm going to tell you something. This is not acting. This is not something put on. No, not, you know, because I, I see these preachers, they, they sound like a bunch of actors, you know. It, it, it blows my mind how we can, we can watch these people and be entertained by them, okay, and get bought into it. It's just mere entertainment. But the word of God is what separates it all. Because if the gospel's not being preached, like I just spoke here in Hebrews, you're not hearing the gospel at all. And if you're not hearing the gospel, no matter what church you're going to, you need to reconsider where you go. You need to reconsider who's speaking into your heart, who's speaking into your life, what spirit is being spoken into your life. I'm going to tell you something. There's no perfect church. There's no perfect people, okay? You know, it's like none of us have the corner set on the truth. But I promise you here at Higher Place Church, you're going to get nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. We're going to bring it, whether it's comfortable to those who like, you know, I mean, you know, we, I see it on social media, Veronica, your message on, you know, the, with our double awards that we won and you reached out, you were speaking about the industry and people got all offended. Well, because they were a part of it and they were part of the demise of it and they didn't do anything about it. They stood back and watched it go, go down the pot. So 
Stop the whining. Stop making excuses for your inadequacy as a director of, of a record company wherever you are. But anyway, I'm responsible for Angelo, and I'm responsible for my wife, and that's what we're responsible for here. And we want to be responsible. And I'm going to tell you something, Veronica, what I love about you too, is you make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. She is my... I mean, if I want a cross-examination, my wife will, she'll say, uh, Angela, why did you say that? And why you, does that scripture really? I love it as a pastor. Because you know what? What good is a helpmate if they're not helping me? If they're not helping me, it's like, it's like Mark and, and, and Arturo, these men in my life, they're helping me be better at taking the gospel and bringing clarity to you. To the, to the word. Anyway, we love you at High Place Church. I love you, my doll.